This is part two of chapter 14. So uh, Mendel had another law that he described as the law of independent assortment, um, which described that two different genes at a different loci will be inherited uh, independently or will um, split, so to speak, uh, independently, the chromosomes will. So uh, in a heterozygous individual, if you're looking at two different genes, getting a big P from one gene doesn't necessarily determine or mean you get the big T from the other gene. Um, so when we're looking at two different genes at the same time, uh, Mendel called this a dihybrid. Um, and he was curious as to how the parents passed on their traits. Did they pass them on together as one big lump sum, as a package, or were they passed on or inherited independently? Here you see a dihybrid cross. So, th so this would be as a lump sum, uh, which we know is not the case, except, which we'll talk about in chapter 15, when the genes are linked, meaning they're on the same chromosome. And in the other scenario, uh, here this is actually accurate, where they're inherited uh, separately. And you notice you get one of each um, allele. Um, so I already described Mendel's law of in this, uh, independent assortment. Each pair of alleles segregates independently during gamete formation. Um, and all this inheritance, all these patterns are all based on the rules of probability. So we have the AND rule and the OR rule. And the AND rule is basically anytime you um, are doing probability and you see AND, you multiply. And anytime you see OR, you add. So if you want if you're flipping a coin twice and you want to get a heads and a heads, you would do one half times one half or uh, one quarter of the times you'll get a heads and a heads. But if you want a heads or a tails, you would do one half plus one half, which would be one. Your chance of getting a head or a tails would be one. Uh, so you can apply these to genetics, of course, um, and calculate uh, the chances of what genotypes and phenotypes will appear. And this is sort of the prediction model of genetics. Um, so what Mendel found, in fact, was not exactly as simple as Mendel portrayed. Uh, even though Mendel was a monk, uh, it is known because we have his books, not we, but a library has his books, a museum, that uh, he actually fudged some of his data. He was a liar. And uh, he altered his data to fit what he thought was the correct pattern of inheritance. And in large part, he was correct. But the data that he altered was because uh, genetics is not always as simple as uh, big A, little a. There's other variations that cause differences. Uh, one example of that being complete dominance, where one thing, um, uh, that, sorry, that is the normal scenario, complete dominance. One thing is totally dominant over another. But in codominance, you can have two alleles affecting uh, the phenotype at the same time where both of them are dominant, such as in blood groups where you have blood type AB, where both A and B are co-dominant with one another. Incomplete dominance is when one is not totally dominant over the other and you see them merging together or you see a little bit of the recessive in through the dominant, such as in a red and white carnation. When you cross them together, you get pink. Pink is the blending of the red and white flowers. And we'll take a pause on this one. <laughs>